In this tutorial, we will be looking at the Euclid uh, Thermers from Michael Grace for Alessi um, uh, of ways to model it. I've brought in a, a picture of that thermos and I found uh, a dimension only in inches. Now, there's one thing you can do in uh, Rhino to convert uh, dimensions into your working units. Um, so in this case the uh, height of the kettle is nine and a half inches. So if I place a line from the bottom of the thermos and type in 9.5 inch double quote and I will just uh, make that line nine and a half inches which is two for one point three millimeters okay so now that I have that reference line I can start scaling my picture let's roughly scale it a bit and again We'll assume this as reference. Okay. And the uh, overall uh, width should be seven and a half inches. I assume that is the diameter of this uh, ball here. So let's see, I type in seven and a half inches. Now it's slightly short here. But let's keep it for now, like this is. Um, So let's first draw a couple of curves here. Let's see what the dimension is. 47. Let's make it 47 and lock this image again. Image. Move the curves to another layer. <clears throat> and let's also move the image and we're at this point to zero. Okay. Make a circle. Snap into this curve. Eyeballing where the middle would be. And it's pretty close needs to move up slightly we can use the nudge tools for this <clears throat> okay we can mirror this one over to the other side on the y-axis and i'll use Another circle, Again, eyeballing here. This should be more or less it. And then um, moving it into place with nudging again. 
And I can scale also, and holding shift, I can scale in two dimensions. Then use offset. And use tween curve to uh, create the center line. Okay, so I'll make these slightly larger. Let's scale 1D. Uh, you'll see in a bit uh, why I do that. Okay, and also making lines for this cylinder. Let's see how it goes, mirroring to the other side. And to me it appears that uh, this image is slightly rotated. <clears throat> you can also see that here, because here it's touching and they're not. So let's correct that a bit. Rotating from this end. That looks better. And then moving these curves into place again. You can also do that by rotating, but uh, I want the curve seems to stay horizontal, so I do it like that. <clears throat> Move this into place. I'm making a new mirror. And that looks better. Okay, so top of the spout will be around there. And the direction of extrusion seems to be going all the way to the intersection of the uh, cylinder with the ball. So we can do that here as well. Maybe it's slightly higher, I'm not sure. Okay, so now we have the construction, we can start building the actual shapes. We'll make this an exact amount of units. Let's make it 47 millimeters. And also, <clears throat> let's see what the distance is between the two. Approximately 18, so I'm going to move this one uh, first moving the gumball, use the command key to reposition, then move it to zero. And now moving it out by minus nine units, and then mirroring it over to the other side. See what the radius is here. So it's about uh, 90. Let's make it exactly 90 with modify radius. And let's do the same here. Make that 41. And this one 57. And then this one should become 49. So 41 and 57 will give an average of uh, 
49. Okay, um, I'll use this one to trim these parts away. And I'll scale this one also to an exact dimension. Scaling 1D from the mid to this end and making it 42. Okay. Now you see that the intersection of the spout with this cylinder is slightly curved. So that means that the spout is not um, flat, it's slightly curved as well. Um, <clears throat> we'll look into that in a bit. Let's first now draw the shapes as actual uh, geometry. I do this with, uh, with a pipe. So that should be a radius of 8, I believe. Okay. Alternatively, you, you can do this with a torus. I'll make a ball right at the center of this circle. So sphere center, choosing center and dragging out to the left here, holding shift and the radius was 90. <clears throat> do something with this cylinder as well. From this midpoint, uh, no particular alignment. Choosing this end snap and then dragging down with shift, just uh, making sure that it intersects with that cylinder. Now for these, uh, these are 47. blocks. So I'm going to uh, extrude those in over 47 units and then moving the results uh, 9 away so that it is 9 both in X and Y from the shape. And here you see uh, I need to extend it uh, slightly bigger. So I do that with scale 1D as well. To give uh, make it sh completely intersect with the sphere. This one I can duplicate with uh, array polar around zero, four items. Okay, <clears throat> now let's move on to the spout. I'll make a freeform curve and start at this end. Then turn on planner and project. And just choose a couple of points here. Let's add a few more. And then extrude that curve or sweep it along that line with sweep one. So this is the rail curve and this is the section curve. Choose free form as style and sweep. And let's see how that relates to the image. Turning this to technical, we can see that intersection 
it looks like uh, it is quite close to the actual line. But it is uh, slightly off. Let's see what what happens if um, do this with history on and turn on control points here. Maybe make it slightly smaller. Like so, and do the sweep one again. And intersect these two. And we can turn to wireframe mode and see, I see this is quite close to the original line. Okay, let's uh, finish this spout here. I'll start with extracting the surface. And now mirror this over the x-axis. And then see if we can trim. Oh, it doesn't seem to work here so when it doesn't trim where you expect it um, sometimes it helps to extend these services a bit to extend serve one unit okay now join these and then trim uh, the, the reason is that it not fully intersects with the cylinder as you can see <clears throat> so Let's correct that uh, by um, moving that part in a bit. So that it fully intersects. Now we can trim. And also use uh, this one to trim that part. And now we can join this and select this one and trim this part of the sphere and also trimming that part of the cylinder. can also <clears throat> use um, cap on this shape to make it into a solid again. And then let's pull uh, in the legs, so Boolean difference without delete input. Gives us these uh, shapes here. Uh, 
And then uh, again, take a look at some of the images. So it should have quite a thick plastic edge here. Assume it's about uh, 45 millimeters. So let's see if we can shell this with that uh, distance. Gives me a warning of uh, an open edge, so show edges. So these are not joining well. I don't think that's really an issue for now. Um, I'll show you a way to correct this because um, if this would have a slight fillet, we can probably uh, correct that. So I'll use join edge and uh, they are quite close, so I'll just join them. Mm. So uh, it joins into a into a closed shape. Um, so now for the inner one. For the cover, we'll make another cylinder. By center. And it should have a radius slightly smaller than this one. So let's make it uh, 37.5. And for the depth, let's make it uh, Fifty-five. Okay. Now, if this is four, five millimeters, four millimeters, this probably is something like uh, twelve, and this will be around ten. So I'll make an offset of this curve over 12 millimeters. And let's make it slightly smaller, 10. And why I cut this out? Say uh, 15, 20. In the uh, normal Z direction, so 20. Then delete that in a part. And then make In a part, make it also twenty. Doesn't need to be exact uh, right away. We'll move this to the center dragging and then typing zero while holding. Now scale it to 
let's say five millimeters makes it 10 as well and to the center not sure if this correct uh, looking at this uh, but it looks to be more or less like that okay so now we can uh, boolean these into one and use merge all faces to merge these two planar faces into one let's select the curves with cell curve put that on another layer Let's try to match the colors blue and red. So, material using custom. Make that blue like that and then add some gloss Turning on Fresnel reflection and reduce the glossiness, the polishness, like that. And let's do something similar to the other material. one create a new unique copy so instead of the editor I just drag that over here so this one has this custom material Call that blue, call this one red, change its color to red. Okay. Drag this onto there and the red onto those legs. Alternatively, we can select these and right click assign to objects. And that concludes this tutorial for the uh, Euclid Thamos by Michael Graves for LS.